Well, hey, it's Pastor Gary for an, another Wednesday's Word. Uh, as you can tell behind me, or maybe you don't know, uh, today I decided to uh, record this uh, Wednesday's Word from our from our clothing pantry. And, and so right now, you know, our clothing pantry is, is ready. It's open. Uh, you know, you usually, typically, uh, on a normal year, if there's a such thing as a normal year. Uh, they would have a, a summer clothing distribution where they would transform our sanctuary and our our, our fellowship hall and into basically a store and and people for, in our community would come in they would shop for their kids for school clothes uh, and for school supplies but unfortunately given all the things that are going on uh, we're not able to do that but know that the clothing pantry is open but it's open by appointment and so please just call the church uh, 281-350-9673 and uh, we'll get a message to, to Miss Pam or Miss Vicky and, and they'll set up a time uh, to for you to come in and, and do your shopping for school clothes or for clothes for your children. Uh, they're also doing a school supply uh, distribution day this Sunday, so uh, Sunday, July 19th, right after service at our spring campus. So around 12 15 12 30 uh all we ask is that you know the uh the child's uh the grade level that they're going into and so if you know of somebody it could be your kid grandkid neighbor kid if, if they're in need of school supplies please please pass that on and 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 so that we can continue to minister and just provide the needs for those uh that that are in need of it right now um, and, and so, you know, cause right now these, the days that we, in the times we live in, it, it's very overwhelming and, and it, there's so, you know, being overwhelmed, it, it, it it's like for me, you know, when I get overwhelmed and, and with, with tasks that I have to do, or just hearing the, watching the news, hearing the news, just hearing all the different things going on, you know, I get so overwhelmed that I get tired, like it fatigue sets in. Is anybody else there? Is, is it just me or is, is that you as well? You know, I just get so tired. And then there's this internal struggle that's going on inside of me, right? I know that I need to I need to rest, right? Because my mind's tired or, or I'm physically tired, but I have to so much more to do. I have to complete the task or or you know, I still gotta make it through the day. And and, and so I'm just so tired that I I know it needs to be done, but if I do it, I don't do it right, and then I get frustrated. So it's just it's it's just a vicious vicious cycle. Where in retrospect, if I had just stopped, listened to my body, and then you know stepped away, walked away, you know, and just spent time with the Lord and just in rest or, or just rest in general, you know, I could come back refreshed and renewed and restored to to do the things that I needed to do. You know, again, with all the stuff going on, it's just overwhelming. And I, and for me, you know, I just have a, such a heavy burden um, for where people are, you know, and and, and we're, what's going on with people. And, and really, you know, we could take care of their physical needs. Like I said, we have the, the clothing pantry. And if we have time, I'd love to show you our, our, our food pantry here at the Spring Campus uh, because the ministry groups here are are all about helping those that are overwhelmed or burdened by 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 what's going on in their life and they want to be able to provide that need for them but mental health is also um, you know a big issue that people are facing right now you know and, and, and isolation doesn't help us being isolated so that we can't have that human interaction that fellowship that weighs on people and so I just, you know, right now that that's a burden that I have, you know, and as, as we get ready to go back to school, you know, there are some for some against, but, you know, I just worry about the kid. Uh, I worry about the kids that, that have been isolated. I worry about the kids that are not in a, in a home where they're getting loved. You know, they're, they're, we go back to, you know, the hierarchy of needs and, you know, food, shelter, you know, comfort things like you know things like that and are these kids getting that and 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 so some of them are in abusive homes and and that's just a burden that i have and and mental health is is big on that and that that's a big on my heart right now and and so i'd ask as we get ready to go to the lord in prayer that that you lift just lift people up in general yes we have those that are our prayer requests but it's also the the, the unknown prayer for those that we don't know that are going through this these things in isolation 
So let's pray. Father God, we come to you right now, Father. Father, and I just pray for, for those that are in need of prayer. Father, you know who they are, Father. You know what their needs are, Father. Father, I pray for their protection, Father. I pray that you put people in their path, Father, that they can share with, share their feelings with, Father, share their, their thoughts with, Father. Father, I pray that, that the people that you put in their path, Father, share Jesus with them, Father. Father, I pray, Father, for, for people to be encouraged during this time, Father. Father, I pray for an encourager, Father. Father, I just, I think of Barnabas, Father, how he encouraged, Father, Father, and, and, and Father, I pray, Father, that, that you put encouragers in people's path, Father. Father, I thank you for this time, Father. I thank you for just the, 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 the message to, tonight, Father. Father, I thank you for the ministries that are out there, Father, that are filling in the gap, Father. Where the needs are, Father, that's where they are, Father. And I thank you for them, Father, and for their hearts to serve, Father. I ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, today, or tonight, depending on, on when you watch this, um, I want to look at Psalms 23, uh, 1 through 3. Uh, and then this psalm really blessed me and reminded me of how much God loves me. And, and so Psalms 23, 1 through 3 says this, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. He restores my soul. He guides me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. So simple question is, who's your shepherd? I would like for us to take a look at, at three verses, these three verses and look at three points. The first point is focus on the relationship. The second one is rest on his provision. And finally, sense his restoration. And so let's focus, the first point is focus on the relationship. The Lord is my shepherd. That's, that's such a simple phrase. The Lord is my shepherd. The shepherd would have been a well-known figure during this time. He, he would have been known as a brave yet gentle soul. Brave in that he would have to protect, he'd have to protect his sheep from wild animals and thieves. Gentle in that he would have to take care of the sheep from the elements, the terrain, and even themselves. Sounds a lot like God, doesn't it? Sheep needed someone to take care of them and protect them. If one wandered off, the shepherd would call it, and usually the sheep would come. If not, he would have to go searching for it until he found it. The shepherd was a leading, protecting, and caring figure in the life of the sheep. A lot like how a shepherd takes care of his sheep, God takes care of and looks after us. God is the one who guides us. God is the one who protects us. God is the one who cares for us. And God is the one, God is gentle and kind. God and the Lord is our shepherd. In fact, Jesus said, use the same illustration in John 10, 11 and 14. I am the good shepherd. The good, she the good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. I am the, and in verse 14, I am the good shepherd. And I know my own and my own know me. So again, who is your shepherd? Who do you look to to protect you and care for you and bind your wounds? Do you know him? If not, why not? He is the good shepherd. And if you do, are you focused on that relationship more than all other relationships? No one else can protect and care for you the way that Jesus does. If you're a believer, focus on this. He rescued you. He redeemed you. He sought you. He saved you. He adopted you. He adores you. So focus on him. Life is out of balance as we know it, and it will continue to be out of balance until our relationship with God is in balance. The second point is rest on his provision. So when you have when we have a relationship with the shepherd, he will replenish you so that you can say, I shall not want. You see, if left to themselves, the sheep lack everything. But with a good shepherd, they have everything that they need. When they have, when we have the Lord, we lack nothing. If Jesus is your shepherd, everything else is secondary. You could say it like this. If the Lord is my shepherd, then I shall not want. If I am in want, then I'm not allowing the Lord to be my shepherd. 
Psalms 34, 9 says this, Oh, fear the Lord, you his saints. For to those who fear him, there is no want. Think about that. No want. You lack for nothing. That is a very diff that's that's difficult for us to accept because we're surrounded by thousands of opportunities to feel want, to feel like we don't have enough. We don't own enough. My house is not big enough. My car is not new enough. My clothes aren't new enough. I don't I've, I haven't experienced enough. I haven't gone on enough vacations. I don't have enough money. Maybe the, the most impossible thing to experience in our lives in, in today's world is this thing called contentment. Because discontent reigns in our lives. Why is that? We live in the wealthiest and strongest nation in the history of the world. We have so much stuff. Some of us even have to rent storage units to put our stuff that we don't use in. So instead of getting rid of it because we don't use it, we put it in a storage unit. So we're wasting money that we say we don't have to rent a storage to put things that we don't use anymore to store them. You know, we, we long for more stuff, more activity, more experiences. You know, a sheep, a sheep doesn't have a lot. You know, uh, what the sheep does have is a life under the care of the shepherd. And that is enough. Is Jesus enough for you? When your marriage is struggling, is Jesus enough for you? When your health fails, is Jesus enough for you? When you lose a loved one, is Jesus enough for you? When you go through financial hardship, is Jesus enough for you? When you've been rejected, disrespected, and cast aside, is Jesus enough for you? For you, we must learn to be content. In, in, in Matthew eleven twenty eight through thirty, Jesus says, "Come to me, all who are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light." Amen. You and I will never be content and experience deep, soul-satisfying peace until we stop expecting the things of this world to make us rich and begin to find our wealth in the inheritance God has given us through himself, through Jesus Christ. Let's look at that second verse in Psalms 23. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. Interesting thing about sheep is that, is that they never stop eating. They'll gorge themselves. They eat the gra they they'll eat the grass to the roots, and and so after eating, you know, so that's where the shepherd has to lead them. And after they eat, they they're in desperate need of water. The shepherd must lead the sheep to good water, because if not, if they don't lead, if the shepherd doesn't lead the sheep to good water, they'll drink any water. And and so there's the potential that the sheep will drink bat, you know. Uh, polluted water or water that has parasites in it and get sick and die. And so the, sh the shepherd has to care for his sheep. And so he leads them to, to to quiet waters, to clean water, to good water. We're a lot like that, aren't we? God has protected us so, so much. And yet often we drink from places that will only harm us. We will go to places that will only cause harm to us. Let's look at verse three. And in, in, in verse three, it talks of we, we have to sense God's restoration in our lives. Verse three says, he restores my soul. He guides me in the path of righteousness for his namesake. The path, the path the shepherds would take his sheep were dangerous, right? There are cliffs and mountains and, 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 and very steep elevation. And so the good shepherd had to lead them along the right path. You see, if we focus on our relationship with God and rest on his provisions, he will restore or renew our souls. This is such a great illustration of restoration. Jesus spoke about restoration when he met the woman at the well in John 4, 13 through 14. Jesus answered and said to her, everyone who drinks of this water will thirst again. But whoever drinks of the water that I will give him shall never thirst. But the water that I will give him will become in him a well of water springing up to eternal life. God is the source of our restoration. To restore means to bring back to a former or normal state, to renew, to revive. 
Jesus is the store, source of our restoration that strengthens us when nothing else in this world will. It's interesting that David is not praying in this psalm. He's not asking for anything. So what's he doing? He's rejoicing in what God has already done in his life. In what God is doing in his life. That is where we find strength. That is where we find restoration. We should be rejoicing and singing the same song that David sung. The Lord is my shepherd because he is. There is nothing that I lack. I am content in where he has me and what he is providing for me. And how he is caring for me. I am responding to his voice. I am trusting that his way is the right way, not my way. Are you able to sing that? Are you able to say that? It should be. It can be. That is where we find restoration. You know, unfortunately, uh, m many, if not most of us, go through days in our lives depleted, depressed, overwhelmed, and overburdened. To get to the restoration that David is talking about, we must go to the source. We must focus on our relationship with Jesus. We must get to the point where it is not Jesus plus. It's just Jesus, period. Where is he? Where he is all that you need and then let that relationship and his word guide you through life and charge your batteries and restore you especially in the storms of life that are draining you you know i spoke about being fatigued when i'm overwhelmed and and i'm sure many of you are like that where you just get so tired of hearing the negativity or or, or you know just being frustrated you just fatigue sets in that's where we go sit at the feet of jesus and he restores us. He renews us. One final thought here. You know, we are a lot like sheep. We are both prone to wander and can easily get lost. Wandering off can lead, you know, to sheep falling off cliffs, cliffs or being attacked by wild animals. Sometimes sheep simply tip over on uneven ground, becoming cast down. That's the term for sheep, for a sheep that is laying flat on its back with its, with its feet up in the air. In, in this position, uh, sheep tend to panic because they can't turn over. And, and that causes gases to start building up in their body and it cuts off circulation to their legs. And this ultimately leads to, to the sheep's death. When the sheep is missing, you know, the first thought of the shepherd is that the sheep must be cast down somewhere. And, and, and it's easy pickings for, for, you know, coyotes and animals to, to, to devour that, that sheep. So when the sheep finally found, when the shepherd finally finds the sheep, he rolls it over, he dusts it off, and he lifts it to its feet. Then he straddles the, the animal, holding it straight up, and he rubs the limbs to get the, the, the circulation going again. And he gently talks to it. What a picture of what God does for straying sheep. And for so for, for straying saints like us. For his children. He looks for us. When we have wandered. And picks us up when we are flat on our backs. If you're cast down today. Or you strayed from the flock. Repent and allow the shepherd to restore your soul. He'll bring you back and he'll put you back together. He'll put you on the on your he'll put you back on your two feet and he'll lead you through the right path. Amen. Amen. Well, let's pray. Father God, we just thank you so much, Father. Thank you for just the restoration that we have in you, Father. That anytime we're fatigued, Father, we can go and just spend time with you, Father. Father, I thank you for the provisions that you've given us, Father. Father, and I pray that we find contentment in you, Father, and nothing else, Father. I thank you, thank you for the relationship that we can have because of, of Jesus, Father, and the redeeming power of the blood, Father. Father, I just pray, Father, in the days and the weeks to come, Father, that whatever decision is made, Father, that the decision makers seek your face, Father. Father, I thank you for all you do, Father. I thank you for your grace and your mercy. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, amen. 
And well, if you don't mind following me, uh, I will show you the food pantry. Now, the food pantry is is also open, uh, and 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 so with all things going on, you know there there are some delays uh, as far as not delays, I guess, but there's some difficulties in how to distribute. Um, some of the boxes and things like that. But if you know somebody that's in need or you are in need, please contact the church and we have no problem getting you uh, a food box. And, and so it's non perishable, uh, some perishable items, but the main thing is it's here for you. And, and the, the, the ministry team here, the food pantry ministry team work hard and, and, and they're here to meet your needs. And so if you'll look in here and see, I mean, there are, there are, you know, shelves and shelves of food uh, just ready for pickup. And, and so if you need, if you are in need or you know somebody that's in need, please do not hesitate to give us a call here at the church. And we're here to help you and to meet the needs because God has provided, we can provide to you. And, and this is the, the, these are the provisions that we spoke about earlier. God has already has a way. So if you're saying God will provide and then you turn things down, well, then you're not allowing God to move. God is using this food pantry to meet the needs of people in our, in our church and in our community. Uh, God bless you. Can't wait to see you on Sunday. Um, if you're not in service with our live service, please be sure to watch us online at Facebook, 9 o'clock for Magnolia, 1045 for spring. I uh, look forward to seeing you either online or in, in, in church. God bless.